Okay, so here we have our circuit here. And as you can see, we have our components. We have a battery, we have a switch, right? We have this measuring instrument. Uh, well, these two measuring instruments, they're measuring current. So these are our ammeters, right? Labeled A1 and A2. We have a resistor right here, which is 3.3 ohms. And then we have another resistor. In this case, this is R2, which is 5 ohms. And then we have these other two measuring instruments labeled V1 and V2, and they're measuring voltage. So these are our two voltmeters. And then here I have this symbol, which is indicating a ground signal. For this type of simulation, I have to ensure that I include as a ground in order for the simulation to work. So what we're going to be doing is to actually use this to demonstrate the characteristics of a series circuit. Right? And you can remember that a series circuit is a circuit in such that the components, right, um, the resistors that is, are connected in a chain like manner or they are connected in such a way so that the current only have a single path to flow. So we're going to be using these instruments here to look at what happens to the current in a series circuit and we're going to use these to look at what happens to the potential difference or the voltage drop across the components in a series circuit right and um if you notice if we look back at our circuit diagram for the experiment you would have seen that you know the components are essentially laid out similar to how they would have looked in the circuit diagram right and that is a very good way when we actually go about constructing circuits to ensure that the components are lined up in such a way that they resemble the orientation uh, from the circuit diagram. So now, what we can start doing now is we can actually start to connect up our components, right? But there are two things that we have to pay attention to whenever we are connecting these measuring devices in uh, our circuit. So let's first talk about our two ammeters. Now, whenever we're connecting ammeters in circuits, they must be connected in series. Right, they must be connected in a series arrangement. So we need to ensure that these ammeters are connected in series with our components. Also, we have to ensure that the polarity, right, because these are polar, these are sensitive to polarity. So we have to ensure that if we have a positive right here, it is connected to the positive side of the circuit. Right? So positive right here will go to the positive side of the circuit. Now or we determine which side is positive and which side is negative, we have to look at our source, right? In this case, we have a DC source, which has a positive and a negative. Our battery is a DC source, so it has a positive end and a negative end. Now, for this, based on this symbol right here, the positive end of this battery would be the long bar, right? While the negative end would be the short bar. So basically what we have is we have a positive, negative, positive, and negative. Right, and if you take up a typical battery, right, you will notice that it has a positive end and a negative end. And the positive end is usually the end with the the the, uh, the bump, right. And if you're using a battery, well, that is if, that is if you're using a battery pack. If you're using, let us say, a, a DC source, for example, um, a, a power source, right, the positive end will be indicated by a red uh, terminal, right. So now. We have to ensure that the positive is connected to this side, right? And the negative is connected to this side. Now, if you notice that we have these components in between, so we're going to connect through these components, right? But again, what we're paying attention to is that the positive, it must go to the positive, and the negative, it must go to the negative, right? Similar for this one, right? So we're going to follow that rule when connecting these two. And again, ammeters are connected in series in our circuit. Now, let's talk about our voltmeter now. So we have our voltmeter here. These two voltmeters, they're going to measure the potential difference across R1 and the potential difference across R2. And voltmeter, similar to ammeter, we have to ensure that positive is connected to positive and negative is connected to negative. Now, the difference with voltmeter compared to ammeter is that instead of connecting a voltmeter in series, we have to connect it across the component are parallel to the component and we're going to be actually looking at that when we start to connect up our circuit so what i'm going to do right now is to go ahead and start to connect up the components
okay so now i have my components connected up and if you notice uh, my switch was open while i was making the connections because uh, that's a precaution because i don't want to let us say i connect something incorrectly i cause damage to the components or even damage to myself right when i'm actually in the actual lab so that's the circuit setup i notice also i didn't connect the voltmeters right as yet because again voltmeters again as i said are connected across the device so we don't need to connect them directly into the circuit but our ammeters now since they're in series they have to be connected into the circuit right and you notice that it's like, like a chain so we have the switch then the ammeter then the resistor then the next ammeter then the next resistor so it's like a chain so therefore we have all our components connected in series right now what i'm going to do now is to just double check to ensure that everything is okay so i have my positive to positive negative goes all the way around to negative positive goes to positive and negative goes all the way to negative so that's my visual check to ensure that everything is connected up okay also if i was doing the lab i would have actually ensured that the clips are connected on properly because we're going to use alligator clips so i'm going to ensure that alligator clips are connected properly to ensure that everything works fine then once i'm satisfied i can now do sort of an electrical test just to ensure that everything works fine because sometimes some of these devices they might be faulty and we're not sure until we actually test them so i'm going to activate my circuit right and i have to activate the simulation right so when the simulation starts right i'm seeing that i'm getting current flow in the circuit so therefore it means then that everything is okay so i can now go ahead and connect up my uh voltmeter so i'm gonna just connect the voltmeter All right, so now I have my voltmeter connected, and again, it's connected across the device, so it's connected parallel to the device. So V1 is parallel to R1, V2 is parallel to R2. And again, positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. So now, once that everything is now connected up, we can now start to uh, activate our circuit and actually do some analysis. Now, before we actually begin our analysis, right, you will notice that a1, right, a meter one measures the current going into R1, while A2 measures the current going into R2. And similarly, V1 measures measures the PD across R1, and V2 measures the PD across R2. So let's activate our simulation. Right, so the simulation, simulation is now active. And then again, activate my switch. And notice before I even turn on the switch, these values are displayed on the um, devices. And these are very negligible values because they are of the order of uh, microamps and microvolts. And that is due to because these are electrical devices. So, you know, they have some internal uh, power, which, you know, can be displayed on the uh, device here. So anyways, when I activate the switch, now we're going to see the difference. So let's go. So when I activate the switch, Right, I see the current flowing in A1 and going into R1 is 0 0.6 amps. Similarly, the current displayed on A2 is 0 0.6 amps and that is flowing into R2. While the PD across R1 is approximately 2 volts, while the PD across R2 is approximately 3 volts. So therefore, what we notice is that in a series circuit, the current remains the same around the circuit right so for a series circuit the current will remain the same because we're getting 0 0.6 amps and 0 0.6 amps flowing into these two resistors right and again that is due to the fact that a series circuit the current only have a single path to flow so since the current only have a single path to flow it will be the same throughout the entire circuit so that is why we're getting these values here now in the case of the pd we notice that for this resistor we're getting approximately two volts and for this resistor we're getting approximately three volts right and you notice that this resistor r1 which has a pd of approximately two is about 3.3 ohms while r2 approximately three is five ohms 
right? So what you notice is that we get a different PD across the resistor. And the PD that is dropped across the resistor is dependent on the resistance value of the resistor, right? So, this, so since this resistor is 5 ohm and 5 ohm is larger than 3 ohm, we're going to get a greater PD across the larger resistor, right? While this smaller resistor will receive a smaller PD. So therefore what we realize is that for a series circuit, right, the PD across the components is not the same. Right? The PD across the components is not the same. Because what happens is that we get um, a PD drop across the device dependent on the resistance of the resistor. So we could actually say that the uh, PD across the component, or the resistor in this case, is proportional to the resistance of the resistor. So the larger the resistor, the greater the PD across it. Now, if you notice, we add a 5 volt source that supplied voltage across, well, supplied voltage um, for this circuit, right? And we're seeing that about two volts is dropped across this resistor, right? While about three volts is dropped across this resistor. So what if we, if we were to take the sum of these two PD, it would actually add up to the source voltage. So what we see is that um, the PD is actually shared across the components while the current remains the same for a series circuit. So if there's any question, definitely post them below in comments and I'll do my best to clear it up for you. Like this if it was helpful and click subscribe and the bell notification.